So, we are here in a brand new location with a brand new friend for a PDT exclusive. Yes. Uh, in the building we have Darren. Bim. Genevieve. And our new friend, Mr. The High Exalted. <laughs> Lord Commander. <laughs> go! Mr. Mr. Kobe Dennis himself. Hey, 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 let's go. We got all thank, the horns. <laughs> thank you for having us in this beautiful space. Oh, man. I'm happy to, I'm happy to have you all. Yay. Anytime. Thank Can you, you tell us where where are we exactly? You are all in the Cornerstone Complex. You are in the luxurious, exclusive downtown Pawtucket. Ooh. And um, yeah, we're just trying to bring some excitement to the city. Yeah. I love it. I like to hear it. So we got a little bit of the kind of the backstory behind this location. Right. Can you tell us a little bit more of like where we are in, in sure. terms of Rhode Island? Sure. So you're downtown Pawtucket, um, right off, you know, 95 North. Uh, you can get here uh, about 10 minutes from Providence. And what we're trying to do here is this is a, a black hub. Um, some will say black and brown, but I'm sticking with it. It's just it's really for black folks. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to create businesses and opportunities for black people. Um, Rhode Island is lagging behind in that. As we could say, 4% of the businesses in the entire state of Rhode Island are owned by black people. Four percent. Four percent. Trying to upgrade that. We're trying to double that right now with this. So we have ten black businesses in this building, and then on the first level there will be a jazz club. Awesome. And every time I say jazz club, I just say Ooh. jazz club. I love that. Um, <laughs> and it'll be thirty plus, and it'll probably open in about six months from now. Did you oh, say thirty exciting. plus? Thirty plus. That's very exciting. Got to be at oh, least that. So, so I love people stuff. Yes. Yeah. Your yeah. pants got to be pulled all the way up. Come on now. You got to have a belt on. A blazer and a tie some nights, too. I oh, love Women, nice. just I look that. elegant and look mm. yourself. Play the part and do your thing. Be, we got a little cigar lounge that's going to be opened up next door, right outside. Stop with it. Gazebo. You oh. got Darren right now. <laughs> you got me a cigar bar. <laughs> so we're just trying to create a new opportunity and jobs for everyone. And believe me, when you come in here, it's not one of those fronts where, oh, cool, we got a black business, and then there's all people that are not black working. Okay. It won't be like that. Mm. Got it. Mm. Nice. That's that. exciting. That's to hear, yeah. So how did some, because this seems like it took a lot to come together this is a massive building um uh for those who aren't watching us now uh or for those who are watching us we're in one of the rooms uh or one of the offices that can be rented out if i'm not Absolutely. mistaken right yeah. so there's a lot of space for people to do different things how did this building acquisition come to pass and how did this entire idea of uplifting black businesses uh begin well that, that's a great question that's pretty much my been my plight for years even when i ran for mayor that i'm sure we'll talk a little bit about you know that's what it was about trying to get people in a better space trying to get people to improve their quality of life and i know it comes through business and opportunity and financial you know uplifting and there's really nobody here to do that the urban leagues, the OICs, the places like that that did that for black people, they're gone. Yeah, they're and that's gone. no disrespect to those folks. They just dissipated, in with whether it was for grants, whether it was just change of command, what have you, people moving away, thinking, you know, greener pastures. I'm one of those folks. I'm staying in Rhode Island to make this better. Mm. Many of my friends, I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going to the NC. I'm doing this. That's fine. But I'm all about Rhode Island. I'm a Rhode Island boy, and I'm going to stay here and make this better. So... I had a black woman, her name Leslie Moore, and she is creating the Black Block. Mm. This building is dead center in the Black Block. Okay. Leslie Moore owns eight buildings downtown Pawtucket. Whoa. Wow. This is a black woman. And that's a person, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a, a business. Person. This wow. is a woman. That's exciting. She owns eight buildings, and wow. she afforded this one, so I leased this building for five years. Mm. I'm in my first year, and in eight months, this building was an empty shell. There wasn't one piece of furniture in here. There was no paint. There was no nothing. Maybe they'll take you on a tour a little later, but... It's fully painted. There's furniture, thousands of dollars. And over the years, it's just from my relationships with people mm. that I got all this stuff from people like Cardi's Furniture to, uh, to different uh, businesses and uh, different people that have just given me things and said, you know what, Cole, we see what you're trying to do. Here, here's this. Um, Rhode Island College, U U University of Rhode Island. Here you go. His desk, his furniture. Mm. We know you're going to do the right thing with it. And that's what we're doing. Wow. That is awesome. That's awesome. So um, you touched on when you ran for mayor. That was like, what, four years, three years ago? Uh, four years, yep. Four years. Four years ago. So um, how did that end for you, and do you see yourself going back into the political realm at some point? So it was definitely a great experience. Um, actually, I ran into a little a young girl that was about 14 when we ran. Now she's 18. She's working. She's like, I remember I helped you run for mayor. I, I hope you run again. 
Um, so when I ran for mayor, it was just about the people. They kind of pushed me out there. You know how your friends kind of soup you up to do something? <laughs> well, yeah, tens I know. of thousands of people. Yeah. <laughs> this right here, right? Story of the pod. <laughs> so tens of thousands of people were saying, Kobe, you should run, you should run. So finally I said, why not? Knew nothing about the political landscape. Um, you know, I know the basic stuff, but I, basic thing, excuse me, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to register to to become a, a candidate. I didn't know any of that. Mm-hmm. I Googled it all, YouTubed it all, got with my friends. We did it. Wow. There was five people in the race. We came in second place. Wow. wow. I was going to say, because wow. <laughs> we came in second place. From what I saw from your campaign, and I'm not a big political guy. I live outside of Providence now. But I was aware of your name more than... I think most of the Everybody other candidates, yeah. damn near, except for the um, the mayor that was in place. Right. And for you to say that is just between you and your right. people that put that together, that? that's super impressive, brother. Was the Congratulations on us. Grassroots to grass tops. We did a great job. So many people, all of the people that, what I'm so proud of right now, all of the people that helped me run this campaign, they are all in a better place right now because mm. they, they know more. Mm. That's exciting. Oh, that's you know, awesome. They were in apartments before. They all own homes. Look at that. You know, they were driving hoopties before. They all in, in luxury cars. Why? Mm. Because they learned how to hustle for real. Right, right. You know, right. whether it was with their jobs, asking for raises, whether it was going back to school. They saw all the insufficiencies of the black community. They saw how powerful the vote was. They saw the influence that I had, and, and we learned how to use it. In the right manner. So right now, we're in a good place. Everybody's like, are you running this year? No, there is an election this year. I am not running. Um, but that doesn't say I'm out of the political realm. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, for good. So just stand by. Sure enough. Nice. Good. Excited to hear. So you mentioned something about um, greener pastures for some folks that leave, or black folks that leave Rhode Island. Yes. Um, to the uh, DMV area, to Georgia, to yes. Texas. What can we do to keep folks here? Because I'm I'm one of uh, four yeah. children. All of my siblings are gone. Uh, one's in Canada, wow. one's in Cali, one's in all, Atlanta, all of that. So how do we keep the, the brilliant minds that escape the state to do great things elsewhere, how do we keep them here? And, and, and what do you think in particular this will help to do that? Well, that, you know, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. We, we have to have a reason for them to stay. And it has to be more than mom. It has to be more than family. It has to be business. It has to be education. It has to be job opportunities for sure. So one of the things I'm really trying to do, and I've been doing on my own, is giving folks micro loans. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of people, you just need that $2,500 yeah. just to get you started. Mm. Because, you know, saving up two or three checks, some, everybody can't do that. Oh, yeah. But I know how important it is to have, I'm telling you, 2500 2500 can get you to 15 20,000 oh, yeah. quick with the right investment. Oh yeah. I'm all in the cryptocurrency, all of that stuff as an OG or whatever that people like to call me in the hood. <laughs> um, I'm into cryptocurrency. I'm into investments. I'm into buying black. Mm. You know, vending machines. I just I have a ATM machine in this building from a black man. Amazing. Vending machines from a black man. Uh, a black man or woman. I have all the furniture and things like that being reupholstered and things by black folks. Mm. So the paintings, all the jobs in here are be black and brown folks for sure. So that's what we need to stay. Right. Because if you tell somebody you want them to stay in Rhode Island, they can easily say to you, for what? Right, right. That's true. And even, um, and I know there's a ton that's going to be done in this building, but just mentioning a 30 plus uh, uh, jazz, lounge. Jazz, jazz lounge for folks, because what happens is, and it's funny, there's a debate on Twitter about like uh, young people events and older people being there. Right. But that's exactly what folks are missing. Yeah. I'm I'm old enough for the Joe Vons yeah. and what that yeah. did to bring uh, folks our age, black folks from other states here. Absolutely. So we do need something like that because yeah. there's a need for that. When like, you get off the plane in any state, what's the first thing you say to family? Where we going tonight? Where we at tonight? Yeah. Where we going tonight? Mm. That's what you say. In Rhode Island right now, my family gets on. I'm saying my porch, mm. my yes. backyard. It's yeah. true because it's true. I actually posted something today on my story because every time I go to Comedy Connection, they have some great comedians who come to the state. Of course. And every single time they look in the crowd and go, there's no black people in Rhode Island? Right. Because by the time we get to see the tickets, they're sold out because yeah. other people snatch them up. We don't, you know what I mean? Not on the scene. We're not on the scene. We're just not. We're just yeah. not on. Yeah. And so having something where if now if a black comedian, if a Michael Blackson comes to Rhode Island and he can come here right. instead of going to East Providence Absolutely. where we don't really like going to too much, it would be a big deal. For sure. Well, even now. So one of my friends hit me up there bringing Grand Poobah to, you know, on July 3rd during this. And, mm. like, and I, I know the guy. I'm like, oh, I know the guy bringing this. I'm going to call him up and say, hey, have Grand Poobah come through here. Have a couple burgers with some folks. For like that before he performs that night. Mm. So whenever performers come now of our era, 
Yes. You know what I'm saying? They can stop yeah, to here, chill, yep. watch TV, play mm. some ping pong, have a couple free drinks, get on a podcast. We'll call y'all up. Come on hey, now. Grand Poobah's here. Come through, get a quick interview. Show yeah. that's what, we don't have that outlet right now. Mm. Right? We don't have that outlet. So that's what I'm trying to create, a hub, a black hub. Like I said, and I, and I say black intentionally because if other people are feeling some kind of way, I don't really want to rock with you anyway. You know what that. I'm saying? If you're feeling some that. kind of way that I keep saying just for black people, that's too bad. Yeah. Because there are so many other places that are not for us. Yeah, no, that's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. And being a lifelong Rhode Island person, I've seen the transition of different neighborhoods. We kind of just spread out. Yeah. But I love the idea of a, a hub where we, we all come to, to connect socially. Even yeah. to watch the game tonight. Yeah. The game's on. Will yeah. you people hit me up? At 20 you got people the right hit me up. Yeah, this <laughs> Where you watching the Celtics game, Cole? Where you going, Snookers? I mean, and I'm not knocking those places. I go to those places because right. I have to. Yeah. But I'd love to go to a place where there's black folk. Yeah. We're talking the same language. We're talking about money. And that's nothing. It's business up in there. Most of our conversations at these tables, we might be having a drink. I got my red cup back there. But we're talking about money. That's right. Yeah. That's we're right. talking about housing. The mm. last event I had here, it was from a black housing organization that bought in they bought in um, folks to home loaners they bought in the, you know the folks that inspect they bought in folks that are real realtors they bought in all the steps to buy a house a to Z every for person real was estate. her Love it. here excuse me every person was here and they was able to talk to them feel them and wow. get out and talking about credit scores folks always you know demystifying things like if you got a five something you can't you're not qualified this people the loaners and upstairs they sat up there and said, those are all lies. Mm. Those are all lies. You can have anything over like a 550. They said, we'll get you in the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. they, you, you go to the bank with a five something, they're going to be like, bye. They don't want to touch We can't you. even mess with you. But these people were holding folks' hand, literally. Mm. And that's what we need right now. We're still trying to get back to equal. We're still trying to get back to even. Yeah. That's so that's true. what we're trying to create here. Well, that's nope, exciting. Very I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time, too, well, brother, to, all, to stop man. in and chop it up with us. <laughs> Hopefully we do a longer one soon. Absolute Hopefully. pleasure to meet you all. Nice I'll to be back. Well. Come to the Corner Zone Plot yes. Complex Absolutely. anytime. Absolutely. Super appreciate excited. Thank, Thank you for brother. having Thanks us. Up. And that's your PDT exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much.